Hi, uh, welcome to this particular module and in this module we will see uh, another kind of oscillator uh, that are called unijunction transistor oscillators or they are also called UJT oscillators alright. So, when we talk about UJT oscillators we have to understand what are unijunction transistors and why we have to use UJT oscillators. Earlier we have seen uh, different kind of oscillators right if you remember we have seen different kind of oscillators starting from phase shift, wind bridge, LC uh, that is LC uh, is also called tank circuit and using tank circuit we have uh, constructed uh, Hartley we have constructed uh, the call page oscillator then we have seen the crystal oscillator. So, let us see how exactly UJT will work as an oscillator. To understand that we have to see the slide and we can see that like diodes unijunction transistors like diodes unijunction transistors are constructed from separate p type and n type semiconductor materials ok. So, you have to understand how UJT works how UJT works ok and hence its name unijunction ok. Uh, so, you see unijunction resistors are constructed from separate p and n type semiconductor materials from a single p n junction within the main conducting n channel of the device. Within the n channel of the device you have this p and that is why it forms a p n junction it forms a p n junction ok. This is a fabrication now you guys know if I want to dope let us say if I if I have a n type semiconductor n type semiconductor and I want to have a p type material in n type semiconductor right what what is the process step we should all know right we should all know let us see what are, what are the process step. Okay. So, what I asked is we need we need a p type material in n type substrate this is what we need right what we will do we will take a silicon right this everybody should know now we grow oxide right this is our oxide then what we do next step is we have to open a window right that means that we will spin core photoresist we all know this right spin core photoresist hmm. so let me put photoresist like this now what is next step next step is we will pre bake it right this is photoresist this is SiO2 this is silicon this is photo this is sil silicon dioxide we can grow silicon dioxide using LPCVD now we have coated spin coated photoresist after spin coating we know it is it is time for soft bake and we have we already know that whenever we use silicon we have to clean it ok. So, 90 degree centigrade 1 minute on hot plate correct then we use mask we load the mask load the mask ok. So, I load the mask how my mask will look like my mask will look like like this it is a bright field mask it is a bright field mask my photoresist is positive photoresist right we have seen that many times. So, now you should be able to understand ok still if you are confused you ask me ok in the forum do not worry about it positive photoresist positive photoresist ok. So, now we are loading the mask on the photoresist that is soft baked after that what we will do after that we will expose expose the wafer with UV correct then when you expose the wafer with UV because it is a positive photoresist what will happen this area will be intact. So, we cannot use positive photoresist is not it because if this area is intact we cannot create a window. So, here we cannot use positive photoresist we can use we have to use negative photoresist why because negative photoresist whatever area is not exposed will be weaker in positive photoresist in positive photoresist area not exposed stronger ok 
negative photoresist. Area not exposed will be weaker. Okay. What we want? We want that our what we want is that we need to create a window in SiO2 like this right. So, that we can dope p type material, so that we can dope in this area p type material right. So, to obtain that we have to protect the photoresist on this two area right. So, our photoresist should be protected in this two area and from other area photoresist we have to etch out we have to etch out that we can do when we use negative photoresist with a with a bright filled mask correct with a bright filled mask. So, after UV exposure we will develop the photoresist and what we will find after developing the photoresist we will find that after UV exposure this one with bright field mask and negative photoresist what we will find? We will find that the photoresist which is not exposed. So, I have to develop it right photoresist which was not exposed got weaker and got developed photoresist that was not exposed right. So, photoresist which is below this area will not be exposed and it got weaker and then it got developed in the photoresist developer correct. So, now I have photoresist which is negative SiO 2 silicon SiO 2. After that I will etch the, so after photoresist is developed I will I will do the hard bake. I will do the hard baking 120 degree centigrade per minute. It also depends on the uh, data sheet ok, what kind of photoresist to use in the data sheet is already mentioned, what is the soft bake temperature, how much time you have to heat or bake, same way what is a hard bake temperature, how much time you have to bake everything is given in the data sheet when we use a particular photoresist. So, you have to look at the data sheet ok. So, when we do PR developing and hard bake you get this particular wafer which is shown right over here. Now, what I not now what we have to do we have to dip this wafer in SiO 2 HN SiO 2 HN what is SiO 2 HN we all know SiO 2 HN very easy to remember buffer hydrofluoric acid right. That means, when I when I dip this wafer when I dip this wafer in the buffer H in BHF what will happen my SiO 2 which is not protected by my photoresist will get etched will get etched right easy. Now, what I will do I have to remove the photoresist. So, I will after this after etching SiO 2 I will dip this wafer in acetone right acetone because acetone is PR stripper. So, we have to we have to strip the photoresist we have to strip the photoresist all right. So, what I have I have a window I have a window right you see here is a window. Now, you through this window what we can do we can dope the p type material right this is n type silicon. So, we can now dope a p type material in this silicon the SiO 2 will not or will act as a mask and will not allow the dopant to enter in this particular region right SiO 2 will act as a mask and will not allow the dopant to enter in this particular substrate. So, now we can dope using either diffusion or ion implantation correct. 
either diffusion or an implantation what we can do p type material p type material once that is done what is the next step next step is i have to again do i and again uh, keep this wafer in the bhf in the buffer hydrofluoric acid and i will see that i will see that the sio2 is removed when sio2 is removed we get the wafer which is what we wanted correct this is how we can obtain we can obtain a p type a p type doping in n type material right that's what is saying right like diodes unijunction transistor are constructed from separate p type and n type semiconductor materials forming a single name unijunction pn junction within main conducting n type channel of the device okay the device with only one junction that acts as exclusively as electrically controlled switch so uh, ujt is a non linear amplifier it is a low cost and used in free running oscillators synchronized or trigger oscillators and pulse generation circuits at low to moderate frequencies okay this application now you see here it's nothing but it looks like a pn diode right and then there is a resistor due to the b2 here and then the resistor due to b1 which is here right now uh, uh, the across the voltage we have voltage across this one so you have base 1 you have base 2 and you have a emitter right emitter is nothing but your uh, p within the n type okay so you have to understand how the ugt ugt works then only you will be able to understand how you can how you can design an UJT based oscillators. You, as you see that it is used as a free running oscillators, it is used uh, 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 as a synchronized or trigger oscillators also used in pulse generation. So, very important you have to understand. So, let us see working ok, let us see it is working. Hmm. So, resistance R1 and R2 are bias resistors, R1 and R2 are biasing resistors which are selected such that they are lower than the interbase resistance R B 1 and R B 2 right. The resistance which is caused here R B 1 and R B 2 this resistors are lower than the interbase resistance. The resistance R 3 which is here and capacitance C 1 which is here decide the oscillating rate this R and C will decide the oscillating rate ok. Now, when a voltage V s is initially applied ok when we apply the voltage V s you see here right, across this terminal the union transistor is off and the capacitor C 1 is fully discharged right when you apply this voltage union transistor cannot operate it cannot operate right. And what will happen when it is off C 1 is fully discharged C 1 gets fully discharged but begins to charge up exponentially through the resistors R 3 right it is to start exponentially through the R 3. There is a emitter of the U j t is connected to the capacitor right the emitter of the U j t is kept connected to the capacitor when the charging voltage V c crosses the capacitor becomes greater than diode voltage drop. So, this is p n junction diode right we have seen right. So, when the voltage across this capacitor V c 1 this one becomes greater than the uh, diode voltage drop the p n junction behaves as normal diode and becomes forward bias triggering u j t into conduction right. In this case when your capacitor will start charging through the resistors R 3 this capacitor voltage when it increases more than the uh, p n junction diode volt drop then the u j t will start conducting the u j t transistor is in on condition. At this point emitter to B 1 impedance collapses and emitter goes into low impedance saturation stage with follow of emitter current through R 1 taking place correct. So, it is conducting that is why this is uh, uh, it goes to the uh, impedance collapses B 1 will go to impedance collapses and the emitter goes into low impedance stage right it will conduct. So, as the ohmic value of R 1 is very low the capacitor discharges rapidly through U j t the fast rising voltage appear across R 1. So, when it is conducting the capacitor will quickly discharge through R 1 right it is the closest path to discharge this is the path to discharge for the capacitor right if it is not conducting capacitor cannot discharge through this path. Now, it is discharging through this path and the and the resistor across R 1 right here if I if I measure voltage across R 1 what will I find I uh, find that 
the uh, it will result in a is will result in a fast rising spike you see fast rising spike this one also because capacitor discharges more quickly through ujt than it does charging through resistor r3 right that is discharging time is lot less than the charging time of capacitor discharges through the low resistance of ujt okay now cut off cut off so so ujt cut off what is cut off this is the region where the unijunction transistor does not uh, doesn't yet receive enough voltage to turn on okay so you see here uh, uh, the emitter voltage versus emitter current graph right and you can see what is a trigger region what is the highest peak of voltage what is the cut off region and what is the valley what is negative resistance region where is the valley point where is the saturation region this everything you need to understand all right so uh, go back and see in detail how the ujt works Okay. Now, the voltage has not uh, yet reached the triggering voltage, so transistor will turn on. This is a region where the ignition transistor does not yet receive the this cut off region, you can see here. Hmm. Negative resistance region. So, so, what is cut off region? The re this is the region where the UJT does not yet receive enough voltage to turn on, and this voltage has not reached the triggering voltage, so that the transistor will not turn on. Okay. Now, negative resistance region. Is in why it is negative resistance region? Why this is called negative resistance region? You see, negative resistance region, right? Because when you apply a voltage, when you apply a voltage, right, the resistance should increase or decrease. Uh, suppose particular resistance value, right? Keep on applying voltage. What will be the curve of I? Understand that. If there why this is negative resistance because after the transistor has reached the triggering voltage the V trigger it is now turned on right the transistor is turned on after a while if the applied voltage still increases to the emitter load or lead it will pick out the voltage V peak it will reach here right. So, initially it is turned off then uh, uh, when it when it reaches this region cut off region right the voltage receive uh, the voltage has not reached triggering voltage the transistor will be on. Now, the transistor has this triggering voltage which is here this triggering voltage will now will turn on after a while if the applied voltage still increases if I keep on increasing the voltage it will reach its V peak which is here. Now, if it will lead out V peak from V peak to the valley point from here peak voltage to the valley point which is right over here right the applied voltage drops while the current though increases V equals to I r right. If I my voltage is dropping my current should also keep on dropping, but what I see is that at this particular point in this particular region from here till here right, this particular region. right what I see is that from V peak to valley point the applied voltage drops while the current though increases that means as if the resistance is decreasing it is a negative resistance the current increases but the voltage decreases which is why it is called a negative resistance got it. So, why it is called negative resistance easy right ok. If your answer is it is not easy then you have to understand correctly how UJT works then it will become easy ok. So, whenever I say easy I, I assume that you guys have done some homework and you know how the UJT operates these are basic devices you should know. So, saturation region saturation region <laughs> let us see after the negative resistance region which saw an increase in current comes the saturation region. This is the region where if the applied voltage to the emitter still increases the current and the voltage will rise ok. Now, again it will start rising which is which is what we are expecting correct. So, if I want to understand the uh, equations the charging equation of the capacitor is given by V p into eta V b b plus V d right uh, V c t is nothing but V b plus V b b into uh, uh, 1 minus e to the power t r t c t this is exponentially if you see the graph how this equation comes it is very easy to understand all right. Now, at v c t v is nothing but v p at time t equals to t. So, if I substitute the value right what will I have v p 
which is VCT equals to this value using equation 1 which is my value of VP I substitute the value of VP here in this equation number 3 right from 1 I substitute value of VP in equation 3 I will get this equation. Now, if I neglect the values of VD and VV to get approximate relation of T I can get FO is nothing but 1 by T 1 by RTCT uh, log N 1 by 1 minus eta or FO is nothing but my oscillating frequency right extremely simple very simple very basic mathematics you should understand you should clearly understand. Right. So, now I have my oscillating frequency for UJT oscillator. Okay. So, this is how you this is how the UJT oscillator will work this is how the UJT oscillator will work. So, now what we have seen we have seen that in case of in case of oscillators uh, we can have several types of oscillators uh, and uh, the the uh, application of oscillators uh, we have seen mostly using operation amplifier but in some cases we have also seen a crystal oscillator we have also seen a ujt oscillator right so in general now we have an idea of how oscillators would work right so in the next module uh, let us see what is noise what is noise what are kind of noise I will just uh, touch the base and uh, we will move to the uh, uh, next lecture. Okay. So, I uh, will see in the next module uh, by that time just look at it how the UJT oscillator works right I have shown you an example how you can fabricate a device very quickly just recalling something that you are learning earlier now you guys can at least understand the process flow for MOSFET as well right. Similarly, we can say n number of circuits we can fabricate if we know the process flow all right. If you have any question I will answer your questions okay. do not go do not get confused do not worry I will answer your questions if you have any all right. So, now in the next class let us see how the noise what is noise and what are kind of noises. Okay. Till then you take care, I will see you in the next class.